we run into interesting issues with uh, the uh, way they count people <laughs> as attending. If it doesn't send out clearly, there's some incompatibility between some clients I found that don't <coughs> always reliably do it, even if you're using a third party client that isn't Gmail. <laughs> Questions? Okay. Any experience with FreeBS? I use FreeBSD as my primary server, actually. Um, FreeNAS would work just fine. Um, you know, just uh, the apps will work. <laughs> Shouldn't really be any problems with it. Uh, and if you do, bother the IX people. <laughs> um, but yeah, FreeNAS is solid. So how do you tackle, because one thing that I'm always worried about when I'm running these services, and I'm worried about, have I done the security property? How do yeah. you, how do you? All right. Sure, okay. we can go into that. Uh, is there any shorter question, perhaps? What was the other one? <laughs> Just because that's more involved, and I can do a demo. Um, cheeky cheeky with the ground view, is there any? I believe there are plugins, of course. There's the question of, do you want to be doing your GPG in a web browser and with a foreign computer that you really can't control looking at it? If you're concerned enough about encryption, maybe it should be your own device if you're doing that. So I haven't looked into it myself because that's my personal view. But I believe there are plugins that allow you to do it. And I'm aware there's some work that's been working on uh, to uh, get some GPG <coughs> JavaScript, so pages for, I believe even Google was looking at because they want to look better on privacy, at least, um, while still harvesting your data. Uh, are the files and documents that you store in OwnCloud kept in an unencrypted state unless you're hearing them? Or? Yes. That is the fundamental problem with the third-party doctrine is the Unix servers are basically all set up not to keep things encrypted on the hard drive. It's hard to back them up properly. Incremental backups pretty much break. It, you have to trust your root. <laughs> you don't trust your admin, you're stuck on most of them. You could figure out some way to do it with encryption, but it's backwards to the way things were set up originally, so it's hard. I also have another question. Yeah. Uh, does the calendar in OwnCloud support uh, creation of calendar events from an ICS file? From an ICS file? Um, does the web interface allow you to upload an ICS file and create a calendar? I don't know. Let me check. <laughs> Um, I'm not entirely sure. I guess it does, although I, 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 I'm not entirely pleased with the calendar app, so I rarely use it. I, I use it actually as the CalDev backend myself, but I don't usually interface with this part. How do you interface with it? Um, I, I use the Evolution client in, in GNOME or my phone, because it takes them both, and I'm usually looking at my emails on those anyway. Uh, I don't see an obvious way, but that doesn't mean there isn't a drag and drop written under here somewhere. Yes, uh, this is a demo instance that is not my real instance that I put on the local machine and I have no network connection here. For my real, I have HTTPS everywhere. I require TLS 1.2, and uh, every website I host redirects to the HTTPS version. I don't run unencrypted anymore, because it's not hard to set up. So you might as well. At least it hides, it provides more traffic that hides the guys that actually need to be hidden. I use, um, at the moment, I am using the uh, start SSL has free issue of keys, but you have to pay to revoke. So if you don't screw up, you don't have to pay. But if you screw up, you do. <laughs> uh, I intend to probably move to Let's Encrypt once that comes up. It's supposed to come out this quarter. But yes, I use real certificates everywhere. I sign my emails with SS SME. Uh, rather than PGP because that key signing thing is still a pain in the butt and not a lot of people have them and it's hard to make sure your network is broad enough that everyone works. 
So for the moment, we're stuck trusting the CAs, even though they are a point of failure that governments have abused. But it's basically where we're stuck at for practicality. All right, so keys uh, and how to secure them. So it's how big of a threat are you perceiving? Um, I'm not, I feel like if a government's going to target me directly, then there's nothing I can do. So I'm All worried right. about routine surveillance and script kitties. Okay, for routine surveillance and script kitties, um, there's options. Uh, first I'll mention if you're you know, looking at high grade stuff, you can buy hardware security appliances that keep the keys on them. And expect, except for a vulnerability that was in one version recently, uh, the keys can't get off and can't be exposed. So they keep you from screwing up if you have employees. You're good. But they're expensive. So for most people, I have a question. So you can go with a number of different approaches. Um, the easiest one is probably just to generate a key signing request, take it to your CA, get, get the certain and the key. And unless you want to have to type in the password on reboot, which I think is probably a bit much for a home installation, I just leave the key unencrypted in a directory where you've set the permissions for uh, root, read, and nothing else. <laughs> uh, since OpenSSL, low port, requires root to work anyway. So the SSL parts, because you're less than 1024, you need the root to open the port in the first place. So it will have the permissions to read the root accessible only. But just setting the permissions for the low-grade certificates for like hosting your own is probably okay for home instances. Uh, I would go with an encrypted key that, uh, you know, if you're looking for a bit more security, an encrypted key that you have to type in when you reboot. Of course. That only protects you from data at rest. Once it's loaded into RAM, you have other problems um, that are hard to mitigate. But you ever use self-signed keys just for your personal use? Uh, I did until the browser started implementing complaining too much, yeah, and given time. that Start SSL opens those, has those free keys, I just do the free key because it's not that much effort, and no. it keeps. It's more effort to click the I accept this problem button than to get the key installed if you're going to go there on a regular basis. Otherwise, yeah, go ahead. But with Let's Encrypt, that's the whole idea, is to remove the self-signs from pretty much service. It's basically going to be a replacement for self-signs, but where you're not looking to get real authentication beyond this person owns, or at least has access to the uh, DNS records. Anyone else? Um, on your email setup, uh, is it really worth it doing DKIM, TKIP, all that stuff to uh, authenticate that the mail is really from you? Is it causing more trouble than it's worth? <coughs> um, I generally just do a, the, I mean, what I do is I have Evolution is my primary client I use. I don't bother, if it's from my phone, I don't really trust it entirely anyway. So I don't keep my certs on my phone. Uh, so if it's from my phone, it's not signed. Uh, if it's from my laptop or desktop, I trust those enough to have my, uh, I have a, a, a cert for my email address from the CA, and I sign it automatically going out. At least if they have evolution to get the nice green box, so. <laughs> I guess this is more on the DNS side. Oh, on DNS? On DNS proving that your server is actually. Yeah, DNSSEC <laughs> is the way to go, but no one's really supporting it yet, and I'm really, really pleased with my uh, <laughs> DNS pro with my uh, provider there. I a comment on that. Um, it kind of depends on what your goal is. Um, I have actually have got the mail server on a VPS, and I've deployed DKIM, and I've deployed SPF. It's nice to have just because it's, it's an extra tool that's there. But it's generally not, I found that it generally doesn't help you from your mail getting marked as spam. It doesn't help other mail servers trust you more. It's just kind of a tool for your own to prevent people from impersonating your mail server. For instance. Yeah, oh, that part, yeah. Yes. Uh, so it's helpful, but 
It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying yeah. to accomplish, I want my mail to go through and not be marked as spam, it tends to not help. SPF, though, I would definitely implement. Yeah. And business, implement them, personal. Because yeah. basically what you're trying to do is stay within the where you have that reasonable expectation of privacy wall and it would require reasonable suspicion, just like searching your house. You want at least that level when you're dealing with the government. Because despite what anyone says about privacy, you have a natural law basis for arguing on privacy. Humans keep secrets. It's what we do. Other animals keep secrets. So the Founding Fathers would have seen that as one of those self-evident natural rights that would fall under the not enumerated, but would be quite reasonable for you to have. So under our system of law, those should be protected, whether or not they actually are being. They would reasonably be, at least as a natural law philosopher would look at it, what you have a right to do. Um, it's almost like they would be abused until you got all the way to the Supreme Court, and then maybe they would. Maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> but at least in terms of the natural law philosophy the Constitution was written on the basis of, but which is not actually one of the more common philosophies anymore, it would fall under that. But it is the philosophy that's the basis of our law, lock in principles, yada yada. All right. Have a good one, everybody.